Aaron and Alexander, the most famous duel in American history. Written and illustrated by Dan Brown. Aaron and Alexander could have been friends. They were alike in many ways, but the ways in which they were different made them the worst of enemies. Aaron Burr was born amid the lush green fields and stately buildings of Princeton College, New Jersey, surrounded by scholars and honored teachers. Alexander Hamilton lived on the sun-drenched Caribbean island of St. Croix with merchants, sailors, pirates, and plantation owners and their slaves. In 1757, Aaron's father, a great educator, sickened and died. Within a year, his mother, grandfather, and grandmother also died from illness. Two-year-old Aaron and older sister Sally fell to their uncle Timothy's care. In 1768, a fever killed Alexander's mother, a shopkeeper. He and older brother James had been abandoned by their father years earlier and were now penniless and alone. Both boys were orphans, but Aaron joined a large family that included young aunts and uncles, as well as Uncle Timothy's own children that eventually numbered 15. Thirteen-year-old Alexander, on the other hand, was taken in by a generous merchant, while brother James went on to live with a carpenter. As a young boy, lively Aaron ran away from home. Twice. Once, he clambered aboard a ship with a mind to becoming a cabin boy. Uncle Timothy retrieved him from the ship's mast. Young Alexander saw ships not as a lark, but as a livelihood. He took work with a shipping company. Keen and serious, he even ran the seaport business during his boss's absence and made tough sea captains jump to orders. Aaron was smart. Uncle Timothy said he learns bravely. 13-year-old Aaron started at Princeton College in 1769. Alexander was smart, too. After he survived a terrible hurricane, he wrote an attention-grabbing newspaper story about the storm. The story impressed island merchants who generously sent him to Columbia College to continue his education. 17-year-old Alexander arrived in New York City and started school in 1772. Aaron and Alexander grew into young men. Slender and small, each would bear little nicknames at times in their lives. For Aaron, Little Burr, and for Alexander, Little Lion. Had it been another time, Aaron and Alexander might have devoted themselves to books and preparations for life's work. But anger simmered among the American colonists against Great Britain. Their feelings of abuse by King George boiled over in 1776, and the American Revolution began. Aaron and Alexander staked their lives on independence. The two small men showed great courage. Daring Aaron joined an icy attack in Canada. Brave Alexander dodged British cannonballs in New York City. They both fought the British in New York City. The English chased American troops out of the city, and while Aaron and Alexander joined the retreat, their paths never crossed. They both froze at the Army's winter camp in Valley Forge, Pennsylvania. Aaron threw his energies into commanding troops made unruly by the miserable chilly camp. Alexander used his ambition to act as General George Washington's aide, but still found time to read and study. At war's end, Alexander took part in the great victory at the Battle of Yorktown. Aaron, however, was far from the action, worn out by army life. The revolution finally ended with the colonists' victory. Respected veterans of war, Aaron and Alexander became successful lawyers in New York City. They sometimes worked together, including successfully defending a man against sensational murder charges. They shared meals. They shared friends. Good terms, said Alexander, of his and Aaron's connection. 
All the while, America wrote a constitution to govern itself. There would be no royalty and kings for the new republic. Alexander became the Constitution's greatest cheerleader. When George Washington became the first president, he made Alexander, his faithful aide from the war, the Secretary of the Treasury, making him responsible for the nation's money and finance. Aaron was chosen as the United States Senator from New York. Americans everywhere wanted the young nation to be great, but deciding how to accomplish it made for angry disagreements. People took sides and political parties were born. Elections became heated, leaving the winners rejoicing and the losers stewing. Aaron and Alexander found themselves in opposing political camps. Aaron enjoyed meeting people and pressing them for their vote, saying it made for a great deal of fun. Not for Alexander. To promote his own vision, the Little Lion wrote pamphlets and newspaper articles and earned a reputation for cutting insults of his political enemies. Hot-headed Alexander described the second John president, John Adams, as vain, jealous, and unstable. Alexander said Aaron was a man of extreme and irregular ambition, more cunning than wise, who lacked solid abilities and surrounded himself with the worst people. Aaron mostly ignored the, the attacks that continued on and off for years. Then, in 1800, Aaron ran for President of the United States against Thomas Jefferson, who was expected to win. It was a fierce campaign, each side being sure of its absolute rightness, and the other side's outright wickedness. When the results came in, Aaron had tied the election. The House of Representatives held a special runoff vote. The thought of Aaron as president distressed Alexander. Cunning, wicked, one of the worst men, Alexander said of Aaron. Burr loves nothing but himself. The appointment of Burr as president would disgrace our country abroad. Alexander helped build opposition against Aaron. After 36 ballots, Jefferson won the presidency and Aaron settled for vice president. In spite of his high office, Aaron discovered he had little power or influence. In 1804, he decided to run for governor of New York State and lost. Alexander had opposed him again. Despicable, Alexander had said of Aaron. It was a small word, but an awful one, and it struck Aaron hard. It became impossible that I could, with self-respect, forbear, he said, meaning he could no longer brush off Alexander's attacks. Aaron demanded an apology, but none came. So, Aaron challenged Alexander to a duel. Dueling fighting with swords or pistols to settle an argument, especially those involving honor or reputation, wasn't unusual. Before becoming president, Andrew Jackson killed a man in a duel. Prior to his presidency, James Monroe challenged none other than Alexander Hamilton to a duel. It was settled before gunplay. In fact, Alexander settled 11 duels peacefully before Aaron challenged him. Aaron had fought one duel. The opponent's bullet pierced his coat, but not his body. Alexander accepted Aaron's challenge. Just days before their duel, Aaron and Alexander attended the same party for veterans of the revolution as if their deadly argument had never happened. Alexander even climbed onto a table and sang a song. At dawn on July 11th, 1804, Aaron and Alexander separately rowed small boats across the Hudson River from New York City to Weehawken, New Jersey. With each man was a second friend to help with the duel. At sunrise, a distance of 30 feet was marked off. At the second's command, Aaron and Alexander, the two orphans, the two patriots, the two war veterans, the two public servants of the new nation, took their places, raised pistols, aimed, 
and Alexander's shot missed. Aaron's did not. The wounded Alexander was carried home where he died the following day. New York City held a great funeral for Alexander Hamilton, hero of the revolution and champion of the Constitution. Much of the country cursed Aaron Burr. He never recovered his political reputation. He wandered Europe for several years. When he was an old man, a thoughtful Aaron said, I should have known the world was wide enough for Hamilton and me. Wow, what a story. Sometimes uncovering the past can help us to see where we're going in the future. Today, we took a dive into the past to learn more about Alexander Hamilton and Aaron Burr, a story that will stay with us for a long time. I enjoyed reading that storybook with you, and I hope you'll join me next time to read more stories here on Surratt on YT. It's me, Surratt, a.k.a. Mr. Meerkat, and I can't wait to see you next time for more story read-alouts. Have a great day. <laughs>